Hey, and we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, your old video game uncle, Jake Baldino, and uh, we're talking about Horizon Forbidden West. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably going to comment and say, Before You Buy, but I already bought the game. Look, we don't like to rush the magic here. We're a little slow. Uh, we didn't really get the game early. So uh, thanks for your patience on this one. Now, let's give you some information. This is the follow up to Horizon Zero Dawn, which was released in 2017, which feels like a billion years ago. Now, this sequel is bigger and better, and there's a lot to it. It's gorgeous, it's fun, and like the first game, for me personally, like I, I haven't quite fallen completely like 10 out of 10 in love with it like other folks have, but it's still pretty damn great. It improves upon the first game in countless ways and is more interesting and more engaging. So uh, let's jump in. And just before we do, of course, so you know, this footage is captured on PS5 and is spoiler free. Now you might see some characters and some cool areas from within the first few hours, but I made sure to kind of edit around anything significant. So you're good. Now, this takes place pretty close to the end of the events of the first game. Aloy sets out after being victorious at Meridian because her battle isn't over. Uh, the end of the first game was really just the beginning as the world was developed and, and why the world really is what it is was only touched upon at the surface. Now it gets way more complicated and after like a brief reunion with some allies from the last game, she's headed west to find Lance Reddick, uh, get more answers, and to pretty much save the planet. Now, you definitely need to know what's going on here. The game onboards you somewhat, but there is a lot. The first game was overwhelming and it just dumped rules and cultures and religions and leaders and creators and factions and sci-fi stuff on you like near constantly. And some of that is required knowledge here for the second game. It's been a minute since I played the original and I never finished the DLC, but I watched a few plot summaries on YouTube and I was, I was good to go. So I highly recommend doing that if you've never played the first one or if you're like me, you play too many games and your memory is starting to rot away. Uh, where was, what am I, where was I? Uh, so, so straight up, I found the story more interesting this time around. I was like 50-50 on it in the first game, but they got Eli's origin story and the mysteries of the world out of the way, and that makes room for, in this second game, way more of what it clearly wants to do. Have a bunch of cool looking tribal men and women talk and do cool stuff and fight and also go full on science fiction in spots. Now, it still dumps a lot on you, but I found it more interesting overall because Aloy is still pretty cool, uh, but a little less one note and always intense. And then there are some other cool characters established here to kind of bounce off her pretty well. Now, it also helps that all characters, even some of the smallest ones that pop up, are like extremely emotive and realistic. The facial expressions are pretty out of this world and it helps really sell everything, even if it's just sometimes for a side quest. Uh, there, there's still a lot of forgettable characters, but it helps make a difference, at least for me at least, you know, keeping me interested. It has a slow start, but uh, just about like once you get past the embassy, you're in for a good one. Now, the meat and potatoes, of course, is, is the gameplay. And once again, Horizon is a Monster Hunter game in disguise, and like that's not a bad thing. You have a shit ton more equipment at your disposal now, and there are more robot creatures that have even more stuff to shoot off of them and collect and then craft and make more cool stuff. Uh, every creature has multiple parts and multiple ways to take down various strengths and weaknesses, and it can be absolutely staggering at times when you scan them and look at everything. And along with that, you can have a weapon wheel with every type of weapon for damaging certain parts with special attack water, burning and acid to break down armor, penetrating arrows to break stuff off. I'm only scratching the surface, but like the real star is actually just the weapon variety. It's just really nice. And one of my my favorites is like the throwable exploding spears. Now it, it is still very much a weapon wheel, the game, where you're constantly bringing it up and swapping stuff in and out. And it's a bit much, you know, the combat's still a little weird. You can, from the options, thankfully set up a quick weapon swap, but there are so many tools, you're still gonna need to bring that sucker up a lot. It's very micromanagey, but it's still fun because it can be tactical, especially when you play it smart and plant some traps and make your big hunt go down. 
Now, human encounters are stronger now because Aloy has a bit more melee capability and in the environment, there's just more. It's still messy, but there are better ways to take down a base than just kind of like hiding in the grass, which bored me in the first game. Now, my only real big issue is that there's not much really still in terms of defensive stuff for a lot of the game, other than just running away and spamming the dodge roll when some creatures start chasing you. Like, it can still make some encounters feel a bit sloppy and goofy, especially because so many of the robots can still just like one shot you. You know, I'm not complaining. I do love the challenge, but like the way the attacks are telegraphed and how to avoid just never still feels quite right. Thankfully, as you do unlock more stuff, you get some tricks, which I'll get to in a bit. Now, the other nice thing that does help with hunting monsters is, is, is the grappling hook and the glider and stuff. There's a bit more verticality now because climbing is more generous and you can also uh, just grappling hook zip your way up to places. It changes things up quite a bit, especially in certain biomes and areas. And it's great for travel because now you have way more different mount types and the glider to really close some distances in this like freaking borderline too massive world. Also, side note, the new swimming is great. It's actually pretty fun exploring the underground caves and stuff, and it's one of the few games where the swimming controls don't just annoy me, so that's a win. But thankfully, the world size ain't bad because the world is more engaging now. There are way more interesting spots, and there's always something new to discover, which I know that's like such a cliched phrase, but there's also way more decay than in the original game. Like, you really feel more of a mark of the old world, and that nicely gives you more video gamey activities. Plus, interior stuff is more interesting this time around, which was an issue I had with the first game. Now, I've seen a lot of folks for the original game throw around the Ubisoft open world type, uh, you know, the type filled with cluttered maps and endless mindless filler content to keep you busy. Now, I got some vibes here and there slightly with the first game, but I think it's much better this time around. Everything is more interesting. The side quests are more compelling and sometimes meaningful, always rewarding, and the activities are generally worthwhile. I found myself stumbling upon way more than I expected, and I just felt like I, I didn't want to ride my mount so super fast through everything this time around because it's just so much more dense, but it's dense with stuff that's worth your time. It's not copy and pasted and you can just kill hours just exploring, doing side quests, finding stuff and really cool little puzzle encounters, climbing the tall necks, which are more engaging this time around and just getting stronger. If you're cynical about too many open world games and like how they just kind of pack filler in there, I, I know I certainly am sometimes, but you might end up feeling good about this one. A lot of it is just rewarding and I don't mean it in the sense like you always are gonna get perfect loot that is worthwhile, but I mean rewarding just in like doing something and then going, oh, that was cool. I had a good time. That being said, like I did like getting more fun armor and stuff when I found it. They go even more over the top here with crazy stuff you can wear and different dyes for colors. Uh, but funny enough, just like the first game, I, I still ended up liking the starting costume the most, uh, but that's just me. Now, along with just nice convenience updates that make up for little things in the first game, just streamline everything even more. The other really nice thing is the massively updated skill tree. There are like a bunch of branches to dump points into and they're all worthwhile. And the game is generous with points. So you can build Aloy out out pretty nicely, you know, spend enough in a certain category and you get access to these valor moves. These are like powerful ultimate abilities that you can spend when a meter is full. Uh, these are more like, you know, like a temporary melee attack power, temporary ranged power, the ability to cloak yourself, a big health boost, a shield even, a double your critical hit chances and more that I won't spoil. Now, every time you activate one of these, the camera gets cinematic and you see Aloy do a cool thing and it's awesome while actually being useful. Uh, some of them are straight game changers too. So like, be sure to look at that whole skill tree pretty early on when you jump in. Now, uh, one thing worth pointing out is that the game does have some bugs and glitches. The first one was fairly solid, but here I sometimes got stuck in the environment. A lot of stuff would just disappear and pop back in and the occasional NPC or enemy would just like completely wig out. Now for me, it was nothing too serious, but it is there. It's noticeable. Some people are more sensitive to this, so I always point it out. It's not game breaking. I don't think it's like a disaster like so many other games we've seen, but it's there in spots and it was a bit disappointing to see because otherwise this is like an absolutely gorgeous game. I don't really usually spend too much time gushing about graphics on here. I'm more about the gameplay, but damn, 
This game looks impressive, especially on a nice TV. On PS5, there are two modes, you know, resolution mode for 4K or performance mode for 60 FPS at a lower resolution. Now, I don't like having to choose like, with any console game really, but the frame rate mode uh, doesn't look bad at all. There's not a total drop off or anything like that. At certain busy times, it does seem like the resolution will dynamically drop to keep performance up, but otherwise, this game looks absolutely insane. The lighting, the character models, the detail in the environments, the particle effects, the colors, the world and draw distance, all of it consistently makes me stop and go, damn, and then I open up photo mode. Which again, shout out to the photo mode community. I can't wait to see what you guys do with this one. It's wild. So uh, Horizon Forbidden West is a big improvement upon the first. A at the start, it just feels like more Horizon, but the deeper you go, you might just end up wanting to stay in this world longer. I was surprised just how much I have. Uh, there's still something missing for me here. It's not the glitchiness. It might just still be the story and characters not quite connecting with me, but it still does more than the first game, so I'll take it. The game is gorgeous and fun, simple as that. But that's a before you buy. You guys know how this goes down by now. I give you some pros, some cons, some info, a bunch of personal opinion, and now I wanna hear your personal opinion down in the comments. Chances are you've already jumped into this game and dumped a couple hours into it at least. Let me know how you're feeling, hot or cold. Uh, let me know what weapon type you're enjoying, just early game moments that you're really digging. Try and Keep it spoiler free for people, of course, but let us know what you're thinking on this one. If you enjoyed this video and maybe it helped you out, clicking the like button's all you gotta do. We really appreciate that. And if you're new, maybe consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.